All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Now, this is a teaching where I'm going to lose people, but I don't care. The reason why is because I can't. Yep. You people are watching me online because you're, I have the accountability where you're entrusting me to teach you the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Amen. And I'm not going to let you down. So in order to not let you down, I'm going to give the whole truth, not hide it, and not tolerate you know, different doctrinal beliefs so that I can be sneaky with you and deceive you. Amen. No, I'm going, to ex I'm going to call it all out because I'm not about numbers. I'm all about for the truth. Okay, we're going to talk about speaking in tongues. All right. Speaking in tongues, let me repeat over and over again. Uh, it's really sad and unfortunate. A lot of people, uh, thank God that they love me online and stuff like that, but they're caught up in speaking of tongues. Yep. You got to realize this. That's not Bible believers. We Amen. renounce this. Amen. Speaking of tongues is actually extremely demonic. When you go to meetings, it will mess you up and the devil will take advantage of you. That is extremely messed up. Now, before you condemn me for speaking in tongues, please do me this favor, all right? Before you get emotional and mad at me, because that's how Satan works in you, is Amen. emotions. Charismatics are very emotionally driven. That is a doctrine that is from the pits of the flesh. It's all about feelings. That is extremely dark that you got to watch out for. I've seen people who seem to have a genuine love for God, and then all of a sudden they scream out emotionally like I was sending them to hell and they were upset at me. I'm like, oh my goodness, what is this total 180? You know why they were so gentle and loving at the beginning? Emotional. Preach. So they're going by the flow of their emotion. If you make them feel good where they agree with you, they're going to show you 100% emotion on that. And when you show them a disagreement that they don't like, they will show you 100% emotion on that of their strong disagreement. They're very unbalanced. All right, let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 14. All right, do me this favor before you judge me. If you approve of speaking in tongues, all right, let's say that, let's, pretend, let's make sure you follow these rules. And all we need is one chapter. I'm not going to show you all the verses. I'm going to show you one simple chapter to Amen. make it easy for you. Yeah. All right, look at verse 4. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. Is it to the people or himself? No. Himself. But he that prophesieth edifieth the who? Church. Ah, okay. So notice right here that a Bible believer who prophesies is helping the church. But a charismatic who speaks in tongues is being selfish. Now, how do we Christians prophesy? Uh, I already gave you a video on that one. Uh, it's called Unrivaled Prophecy. So you can look that one up in our YouTube video. But to prophesy is through the testimony of Jesus Christ, your Amen. testimony, yes, and preaching the Word of God. Amen. Why? Because the Word of God predicts your future. Yep. Your testimony shows the future to people. I know where I'm going after I die. Amen. Now, look at this. That... Now, think about it. When preaching the word of God and giving your testimony, doesn't that truly edify others? Yeah. Why? That's obvious. But if I were to, in front of you right now, in this board going, <laughs> for one hour straight, who did I edify in this room? No one. Do you get a blessing out of that? No. In fact, some of you would get bored. Some of you would join the kids' room right now where Brother Tom is teaching. Because you would get more out of that than me speaking in tongues. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Let that, you, let that be a humble lesson to you. Now look at 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 5. I would that ye all spake with tongues, but rather that ye what? Prophesied. For greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with tongues. Now notice right here, see, it's greater that you were to prophesy rather than speaking in tongues. So you charismatics got to realize this. If you're so hyped up in this speaking of tongue things, you got to realize this. Being a Bible believer is far better than being a charismatic. Amen. Oh, that's out of arrogance. No, that's based out of verse 5. <laughs> because a Bible believer goes by the Bible and does everything by the Bible, including visions, signs, healings, and tongues. We insist we have to follow the Bible for that, not by what you experience. 
That's why we believe that these signs and wonders are gone. Why? Because the Bible, where the Bible is silent, it's silent. And where the Bible speaks, it speaks. It says there will be visions and healings and tongues in the last days. That's right. That's what the Bible says in the last days. Tribulation. You go by what the Bible says. Amen. What does the Bible say today? We walk by faith, not by Science. sight. Amen. Everyone wants to go by seeing yep. rather than by faith. All right. Let's continue reading here. We're going to read verse 6. Let's pretend you speak in tongues. Now, brethren, if I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you? See, Paul's saying, how is it going to benefit you? Except I shall speak to you either by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrine. All of that is based on the Bible, amen? amen? Revelation is from the Word of God. Knowledge is from the Word of God. Prophesying, doctrine from the Word of God. And even things without life giving sound. Wow. Wow. Whether pipe or harp, except they give a distinction in the sounds, how shall it be what? No. Known what is piped or harped. For if the trumpet give an uncertain, see that? Something you don't know. Sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? So likewise, he except he utter by the tongues, what? Words easy to be understood. It's a mysterious heavenly language that you have to have the Holy Spirit open up in your... No, 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 no. It said words easy to be understood. Nothing mysterious and hard. What religious, Gnostic, mystical group likes to be esoteric and mysterious? With some kind of communication in Illuminati books and writings, New Age or books and writings, theosophists, where they like to make it mysterious that you don't understand except those who are close to the Spirit. Isn't that demonic? Wow. Now, you got to seriously think about that. Now, I know what some of you are doing, which is grieving my heart. You're getting all emotional right now. And some of you are probably speaking in tongues right now while I'm doing this video. How dare you? Like that. I actually, I'm not joking. I actually had some people doing that. It's, I, I busted up laughing in this one comment. This one guy got upset at me, and he wrote, blah, 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 like that. He was speaking in tongues. What? He was speaking in tongues, but he can't do that in audio, so he had to do it in keyboard. Is that Holy Spirit leading? Is that Holy Spirit leading going like this? So you gotta re- see, you gotta realize this is that I'm not being. So you gotta realize this. I am not true. I'm not being mean. I am actually being realistic here. You people are giving a bad testimony about that. And I can lose subscribers after this because I am responsible for your souls. I'm not going to hide from you. If you guys didn't trust me, then I'm not going to hide it from you. I'm going to show it to you. All right, so based off of verse 4, you'll notice that speaking in tongues, let's say that we go by this. So the charismatics insist in speaking of tongues so badly because they believe it's some heavenly language. Now look, I, I can understand why you can love it, okay? Brother Tom, uh, brother Sean, he actually even admitted it in this one meeting he attended. It sounded like Lord of the Rings elvish language, you know? I mean, it just sounds like so elvish, like so beautiful and stuff like that. But you see, it's all what? Charismatics are all what? Emotional. That deceives you. It's all the emotion. Think about that. Okay, so what is this based off of? This is based off of selfish. Think about it. When, you're, when I'm trying to teach you where you can understand, but you're refusing to at least be, give me a fair chance in listening and studying and praying about it, are you being selfish or are you being spiritual and edifying? By their fruits, he shall know them. Here's your fruit, selfishness. Here's another one. Verse 5. Bible believer is better than charismatic. It's far better than being a charismatic. So we saw that at verse 5. Then we also saw that at verse 6 through 9. You know what that verse says? He's wasting his breath. That's what it showed right there. Didn't we read that in verse 6 through 9? If you don't believe me, read it again. Don't get emotional. Don't get emotional. Look, calm down, take 10, and look at the verse, please. 
All right, why am I repeating this? Because I, I, they are emotional people. I try to talk them reasonably, one at a time. You know what's very telling about these people? These people refuse to listen to reason, and they'll just completely ignore you, and then they'll go by their experience again. But you don't understand how I feel, what I felt. If you were only their experience, see where their faith is? It's not by the word of God, it's by sight. Now, see, this is something that you got to sincerely plead and pray about. Otherwise, okay, let me ask you this question then. If some of you are still in doubt and upset with me. Look back at the past few months of your life or years of your life that you've been watching us. Can you honestly say that throughout this time that you haven't seen the devil specifically attacking you something? Something very dark or something very depressed? Loneliness? Misery, something in you felt like it's so much depleted. You know what that is? Because that's not of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's love, joy, peace, long suffering. So something was in you then. All right, let's look at verse twenty. Uh, let's look at verse nine through eleven. So verse six through nine, you're just wasting, wasting your breath. It's easy to be understood, right? So then that shows that this is not hubba jubba hubba jubba. This is actually, a, this is something that you can understand, a communication you can understand, a language. We're going to look at verses 9 through 11 now. Now let's look at this verse. What else is the problem here? You're considered to be a barbarian. So likewise, you accept the other uttered by the tongue's words, easy to be understood. Look at verse 10. There are, as it may be, so many kinds of what? Voices. Voices in the world. See, this proves that this tongues is related to languages. Oh, this is a heavenly language. No, it says in the what? World. world. This is an earthly human language. And none of them is without what? Signification. Yeah, signification. See, it's supposed to bear meaning. So see, only the tongue, see, if you want to speak in tongues, we believe in speaking in tongues. We do believe in speaking in tongues. Not the charismatic way of speaking in tongues. The speaking of tongues, that is right now what you're hearing right now in English. Amen. That's one tongue. Haven't you heard like of many tongues and languages and nations? What does that mean? Why that means a different language that you can understand. Otherwise, it's without signification. Now look at verse 11. Therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be unto him that speaketh a what? A barbarian. And he that speaketh shall be a what? Barbarian unto me. The charismatic meaning is nothing but barbarians. I didn't say that. That's scripture. All right. So it is truly barbaric. It is barbarians over here. This is really, really messed up stuff. It is barbarians. That's why, look, use your head when a person comes inside the church and then he sees a whole bunch of people going ah, 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 like that. You don't think a person is going to think this is weird? It is barbaric. It is weird. Okay, so let's look at verse 23. This is even worse. Now, don't get mad at me. You got to get mad at the person who wrote this verse. Verse 23, if therefore the whole church be come together into one place and all speak with tongues and there come in those that are unlearned or unbelievers, will they not say that ye are what? Yeah, yeah. you're mad. <laughs> That's why when you look at these uh, charismatic revival meetings, don't people think that these guys are mad? Yeah. And then you shame the Christian testimony because you make them think that Christian Christianity is like that. Barbarians who are mad. Let's look at uh, verse 27. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, if you want to speak in a tongue that's unknown, let it be by two or at the most by three and that by course and let one interpret. Okay, you got a problem right here. Verse 27, notice that it should be done individually. Most, most, is two or three. How many churches have you seen violate this? All right, now if you want to teach, if, if you want to speak hubba jubba hubba jubba, at least do this much, at least do this rule. Look at verse 20, uh, look at verse 28. 
If there's no interpreter, then what, what are you supposed to do? Be quiet. Shut up. That's what it says. Verse 28. But if there be no interpreter, let him what? Keep silence in the church. See? So if you, it's interpreted. See? That's why we interpret different languages. So it's a different language. If you cannot interpret, then shut up. I mean, it said that. Keep silence in the church. Well, you could use a different word. Well, you know, the Bible says that he that shutteth his lips is wise, okay? So let, I'm just using wording right here from the Bible. Okay, so let's look at verse 5. We're not going to read it for time's sake, but 5, 13, 27 through 28. So it repeated four times here. The speaking of tongues must be interpreted to the hearers. This proves that this has to be some kind of audible language. It is an audible language here. So this is something that you've got to realize that it's not something that you just go hubba jubba hubba jubba and something inaudible gibberish. It is an audible language. Now what proves that this is not of God but this is of Satan, you've got to read verse 3, okay? Look at verse 3. Uh, 33, excuse me, 33. For God is not the author of what? Confusion. confusion. Didn't Paul already warn you this is all confusion here? The Bible says God is not the author of that. Okay, then who is the author of confusion? Now you think and pray about that. Or if you are honest about it and reading the verse as it says, you'll know who that is. So verse 33, we can see who's in charge here. It's the devil. It is satanic. Speaking of tongues is demonic. Amen. You understand that this is something that should be avoided at all costs. Look, if you stop doing this and start praying to the Lord, surrendering yourself to God, you're going to see some kind of change. And you're going to see something different in your spirit. And the evidence for that are people who used to speak in tongues, but then the Lord changed their lives. And when they went by the Bible, they start to see changes and they start to understand. You cannot understand until you obey God, what he says. If you still refuse to obey God, what he says, you can't understand what I'm saying here, no matter how hard I try. Because you are so run by the emotions of your flesh. And that's why you're going to write down all caps and exclamation points on the comments and on the emails. And then you're going to get upset. This is something that we go by strictly by the Bible. Let me ask you this. What is wrong with going by the Bible? What is wrong by strictly going by the Bible? What is wrong when being silent where the Bible is silent? And speaking out when the Bible speaks it out? What is wrong with that? How can a fellow say brother in Christ attack a preacher who does that? Unless some other spirit is honestly guiding you to do so. So think and pray about that for a while, please. I'm doing, I'm doing this in love. Now, if you refuse, all we can say is this. Look at verse 37. If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, you really think you're spiritual. And I'm not when I teach you this kind of stuff. I went by the rules of 1 Corinthians 14. Let's keep reading. Let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you, all these rules that are written are not from Gene Kim. They are what? The commandments of the Lord. But it's like God knew how people will be. That's why he said at verse 38, but if any man be ignorant, let him be what? Ignorant. There's nothing more that we can do to help you. There's nothing more. Now, some people, what they would like to do is pull up verse 39. That doesn't mean speaking in tongues are gone. Listen, friend, Paul told you the in tongue, which is what? Audible languages. We don't deny that. We don't deny that. But you got to realize this. During the days of the apostles, the Holy Spirit empowered them right on the spot to speak a different language, Spanish, Chinese, uh, German, etc. Like that. You can't do that. If, let me ask, okay, if you're truly, if you truly believe... Those kind of speaking of tongues, where you're empowered with a different language on the spot, you can do that. I want you to do it right now, speak in tongues. Be filled with the Holy Spirit, pray with it, and do it right now. Record yourself, and then put that on Google Translate and see what it comes down to. 
You know what's going to go? That's what it's going to translate into. It's not going to be an audible language. 